Today, we have a lot of stuff in our Q&A, including DNS solutions versus local firewalls. We have some questions about pizza, security and privacy of package managers, specifically on Windows, Studio Ghibli movies, and our review process of how we're doing on our privacy and security journeys, like if we have to go through different categories and rate our progress, etc. That's all we have this week for the Q&A. Again, welcome to the Q&A. And let's dive into the first question from Rasta, which is, what are your thoughts on using Portmaster versus a DNS provider like Next? DNS. They're trying to set up Portmaster to play around with it a bit and running into problems getting Portmaster to use next DNS. Just looking for thoughts on if one kind of cancels out the other or and whatnot. For those who don't know, Portmaster essentially is a local firewall tool that's available on Linux and Windows. It does two things in my head. The first thing is it allows you to disable network per application. So if you have a video editing program, you can essentially disable internet access to that specific program. You can also get a little bit more nitty gritty and disable specific domains from the program. And also there's block lists and stuff built in the Portmaster, which is kind of the second thing Portmaster does is it blocks all the domains locally on your device. Next DNS is gonna be a little bit more of a uh, solution that's done on their end. So you're gonna go in next DNS and it's gonna have block lists done there. You change the DNS locally in your computer and it's gonna go through next DNS. So on my end, I don't really use a Windows machine for this kind of thing, but on a Mac OS machine specifically, which is where I use, I have a similar workflow to this, I do use NextDNS alongside Lulu. Lulu is essentially Portmaster, but for Mac OS. And Lulu allows me to do a complete disable of internet connection on a per program basis. And then NextDNS allows me to control domains. Also what NextDNS does is it allows you to have the same block list on all your devices, not just on one device. So Portmaster is not available on Mac OS, Portmaster is not available on mobile. So what do you do on your mobile devices? Well, that's where something like a DNS provider can come in. But I do think Portmaster gives you a lot more granularity. It allows you to customize locally on your device. It allows you to change things around. So ideally you could try to combine both tools into your workflow, but if you're having issues with that, then it's kind of going to depend on what you're looking for between the two programs. If it's too complicated, you might be able to still get away pretty far with just using Portmaster because it has a lot of those DNS tools that NextDNS has built into it directly. But pros and cons. I like both tools and I use both tools. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. As a Windows user, I do use Portmaster. I think they're both great choices. I think it's just like Henry said, what are your device restrictions? Like again, if you're on a Mac or a mobile device, then this is just a non-starter. I haven't played around with NextDNS a lot. I played around with it a little bit, but not as much as I should. I'm with Henry. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. They're both good. That was probably not a helpful answer. <laughs> I don't know if I have a helpful answer for this one either. Mr. Camel 999, which is better, Papa John's or Domino's? And an edit for Henry. What pizza place is your favorite, considering that neither of those places have vegan cheese? And shout out to What's in a Name for pointing that out, because the original question did not specify. So I'll say on my end, my answer is yes. I am one of those people that, uh, you know, pizza's pizza, and even when it's bad, it's pizza, and I will never say no to pizza. <laughs> I love pizza. I really do. But if I had to pick between the two, I, I tend to gravitate towards Domino's. They have that Wisconsin Six Cheese, which I know is... Crazy unhealthy, but it's delicious. Again, it's a treat. And also, I'm not going to lie, Papa John going off on a little bit of a racist tirade kind of turned me off. But also, if Papa John showed up at my door and was paid for, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, I can't say I've really, I can't remember the last time I've walked into a Papa John's, but I've been to Domino's a few times and I just unfortunately have to order without cheese. But it's actually better than you'd think. It's not my preference. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, the cheese and Domino's, is, it's good. I'd prefer it with some variation of cheese, but the sauce and the veggies and the crust uh, will, will take you pretty far. I really like mod pizza though. I know you didn't say as an option, but mod pizza is typically my go-to. I, I think it's kind of a West Coast thing though. No, they're definitely nationwide. Yeah, we have mod pizza here. I've been there. Truthfully, I think I need to give it a second chance because I've only been once and I was a little underwhelmed, but I always try to give something like two or three chances before I totally write it off. Mod pizza, I'm a big fan because they they do dairy-free cheese. You can get mega dough, so it's 
you know, the dough itself, I, I eat a lot. I eat like 3,500 calories a day. So like the dough, the mega dough is like 900 calories in that bad boy. And also they have unlimited toppings and they also have chickpeas as a topping. They also have beyond sausage as a topping. And so there's a lot of good stuff and I can get as many veggies as I want on my pizza. And I just, my pet peeve is pizza places that charge per topping. I think it's a scam. Like I should be able to get five toppings. And are you telling me that like, an eighth of a bell pepper is $2. Like, that's ridiculous. So next up, David Johnson. What are your thoughts on the security and privacy of using package managers on Windows, like Chocolatey to install programs versus individual installers from developer websites? On one hand, it seems good to have a way to simultaneously update multiple programs, like Linux package managers. And on the other hand, it's unclear whether Choco repos are as robust to supply chain attacks and as timely with updates as checking the developer websites or through the programs themselves. I really do think, and I I don't know if this is a hot take. Maybe I haven't fully considered all of the pros and cons, but I really feel like package managers in most cases are more of a convenience thing than any kind of security and privacy thing. And I do kind of agree with kind of your initial assessment of this, which is I would personally trust the developer website more than any kind of repositories on Choco, especially if they're not like official repos and they're third party repos hosted by someone else. So I'm not really sure exactly how Choco repos work because I haven't used Chocolatey. I've heard of it, but I've never personally used it. The difference with, I think, Linux is I know that a lot of these repos that you add are actually officially offered by the developers themselves. So I don't know how that works with Chocolatey. If it's anything third party, then it's probably going to be a little bit less trusted. But I still think it's probably overall trusted for most people. I've used it a very little bit. Like, I think I used it once or twice to try and do the whole uh, Liberwolf auto update thing. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I agree with you. I think it depends on how responsive the developer is and how involved they are. If the Choco repos are a third party thing, then yeah, it's definitely going to be more of a security risk. End of story. I don't think I use Chocolatey per se, but I have started using Winget lately just because there's a lot of programs that I use often enough that it's worth keeping them on my device, but I don't use often enough that I always get the updates right away. So I've started using Winget more like once a week just to kind of check for anything that maybe has been updated and, you know, I didn't find out about it. And also, again, I, it sounds like neither of us are ultra familiar with Chocolatey. So if everyone, if anyone has more information on it, just leave it in the comments uh, to correct us. The second part is, do you think that privacy benefits of not using Google's native keyboard on stock Android with all the privacy settings configured well outweigh the risk of using more private alternative keyboard apps that do not have Google security budget and resources and maybe less secure as a result? So it's a good question. I think uh, I, I would be considering this as well. And it's the kind, these are the kind of questions that go through my head trying to balance privacy and security, especially on something like a stock Android device. I do think this is an area, though, where it's going to really depend on what you're what you're prioritizing. On my end, if I'm on stock Android, given the amount of control that Google already has, I would have already probably taken care of a lot of the privacy risks, but you're not going to be able to fully remove them on stock Android. But it kind of depends on what your priorities are. But at that point, I would probably still be sticking with Google's keyboard and just doing things like enabling my DNS to, to turn off any domains that it might contact, as well as just going into the privacy settings, making sure I've done everything on Google's side and just living with that because you're on stock Android and there's a layer of trust with Google involved with that. With that said, if you're somebody who wants to try to maximize on the privacy front, then sure, go ahead and switch the keyboard. Even It's a questionable if it's going to actually do anything, especially if, again, uh, you already have so much faith in Google on this operating system and you're already trusting the privacy settings that you've already configured. Just make sure you're going with something that's frequently updated and has active developers and you should be fine as long as they're responding to these security issues. And you can also look on F-Droid as well if you want some recommendations for some of these apps. I don't have a go-to app to recommend to people at this time, no. I think this is kind of one of those rare moments where you have to choose between privacy and security. And again, there's a sliding scale. There's you know a difference between the keyboard that hasn't been updated in six years versus the keyboard that just got updated three hours ago. But I think, yeah, if you're looking for maximum security, then the less parties you introduce, the better, theoretically. But also, yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can do in in terms of the stock keyboard and and like changing settings and stuff. You could try DNS control. You could try, um, is NetGuard still a thing? Okay, yeah, so something like that. You you could try stuff like that to help lock down some of the telemetry, but yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to have to like kind of evaluate your threat model and your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
just kind of your your priorities. You know, are you looking for more privacy, more security, and just it's it's kind of user preference, I think. I keep getting all the off-topic questions this week. Our next question comes from Fallen Star. Have either of you seen a Studio Ghibli movie? And if so, how did you like it? My favorite is Castle in the Sky, personally. And P.S., you guys do an awesome job, not only with Surveillance Report, but your other projects. Keep up the good work. So first of all, thank you for that. I have seen a few Studio Ghibli movies. They're not my cup of tea. I don't think they're bad. I, I think they're incredibly well made and I see why they speak to people and I think they're very artistic and very good. My wife loves them. I think she was watching, what is it, Ponyo a while ago, I think was the one that she was watching. And that one actually, something about that one, I remember like kind of seeing bits and pieces and being like, I think I might want to watch this one. But generally I've seen Spirited Away twice. I've seen Princess Mononoke I think there's another one I've seen too. And I'm just like, these just aren't really for me. And yeah, I've only seen two of the movies, Kiki's delivery service, which I didn't know was like very child friendly when I watched it. I feel like you have to grow up on these movies to like really be a part of it. I didn't grow up on them. I didn't ever even heard of them. So Kiki's delivery service was very child friendly, but it was fine. It was, it was cute. It was a cute little movie. And then Howl's Moving Castle was the other one I watched. And I liked that one. My favorite part of Howl's Moving Castle is actually the, the music and the soundtrack. And I've actually uh, kind of been playing the violin parts a little bit. And I actually saw a string quartet in San Francisco play the, all the music from Howl's Moving Castle. And it was a really beautiful experience and I really liked it. So I guess the music is probably my favorite thing outside of maybe like the animation. But I liked House Moving Castle. Uh, it was good. All right. And the last question is from Banana. Do either of you have a review process of how you're doing on your privacy and security journey? Like if you go over different categories and rate your progress, say weekly or monthly, quarterly. And if you do, what is that process like? Thanks for the good question. I think this is very personalized and it's going to really do, you know, depend on the person, how they do things in their life. For my end, I really like more of the auditing approach. So for me, it's typically monthly, sometimes every two months if I have a busy month. Um, but typically I'll go through and I'll go through all of my accounts and my password management make sure there's nothing there that I can delete anything that needs to be deleted I have a delete folder in my password manager and so when I have free time throughout the month I go through and delete those accounts or I'll just if it's a if it's a long obnoxious process to delete any accounts then I'll start the process like email them and start my GDPR request if it's something that's GDPR related or if it's California privacy regulation related then it's California privacy laws so that's kind of that I have my normal to-do list application as well. So I have like a category in my to-do list application of things that are kind of just personal improvements I need to make. That's kind of the extent of how I continue to improve and kind of find improvements. And I think everybody should have some way of checking in because even if you're perfectly happy with your current place that you're in right now, as we speak, there's going to be new technologies, there's going to be new threats, things are going to change in your life that are inevitably going to impact your digital life as well. And accounts are going to change, you know, uh, how are you going to know if your bank starts rolling out 2FA next week? And I think the only thing that's not considered for this is like massive workflow changes. So like if you take a new job, now you have to find a way to integrate the job's devices into your current workflow and you're going to have to go through a ton of changes in two weeks. Just things like that are always going to catch you off guard and be more on the fluid side of it. But the audits keep things maintained so you can deal with those inconsistent times a little bit better. That's, that's my process. Well, you're a better man than me and you're making me look like crap. <laughs> I'm very informal. I guess I take everything on like a, a case by case basis. Like if we, for example, a really good example actually is, you know, a few months ago we covered the story about how cops are using push notifications to track people. Once I found that out, I had to ask myself, I'm like, okay, so what can I do to reduce, because there's kind of no way around it. And I spend several days checking around in different matrix rooms and forums, like, you know, what can people do about this? And unfortunately, the answer was ultimately kind of nothing. Even if you use micro G or something, it's still the same principle, like a unique identifier is being assigned to your device. So ultimately, I had to settle on, okay, minimalism, like, how can I keep as few apps on my phone as possible? How can I keep as few notifications enabled as possible? I think that's just how I treat things is whenever there's a change, whether it's new information or whether it's something on my end is I ask myself, like, how can I incorporate this? But I, I do think you make really good points about, you know, I've logged into services before and just, oh, they added two factor. They, you know, 
added this option to opt out of advertise or targeted advertising, you know, so I do think that's a great idea, but I think it's uh, I think it really depends on your personality type. Like some people are very, very organized and very like scheduled and they're very disciplined to stick to those schedules. I am not always that person. I wish I was, but I'm not. If you are that kind of person, I think that's a great idea. But if you're not, I think as long as you find something that is working for you, I think that would be best. All right. Well, that wraps up the Q&A this week. And we really appreciate the questions as always. And again, these questions come from all of our patrons. And so if you want to ask us a question next week, you can do that by leaving a question on either the newest episode recording of the episode number, Surveillance Report 175, or you can leave it on the Q&A directly under this one and we'll see both of them. So either place is fine. You can join our Patreon down below at patreon.com slash surveillance pod. And it's a great way to not only leave your questions and get involved with the community, but also you're supporting our work and allowing us to do these episodes for free. So it's our way of giving back a little bit and engaging with you all. So we really appreciate that. And that's all I got. So thank you all and we'll see you next week.